Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We are recording on September 9th, 2024, a little after 6 Central Time. And Jeff, uh, didn't seem too long ago that we were talking about potential tropical cyclone number six, now tropical storm Francine, looking much better organized uh, as far as finding a center now. Uh, than it did this morning. But as you can see from the satellite image, it is drawing a lot of dry area. And that's that white and blue you see in the bottom of the storm just below the eye there. Yeah, that area right there. All the convection kind of staying off to the north and northwest. There's a little bit of uh, convection firing up in that last loop there where we normally see it in the um, off to the northeast. So uh, not to read too much into where the convection is right now, but it just uh, it, it's just forming. So it's just getting its act together and uh, developing its inner core and all that stuff. So we'll see what happens from here. Um, we've got a lot of uh, watches and warnings that have come out. You can see the, the forecast cone there it hasn't changed a whole lot because they did find the center to be a little bit west and a little bit north. It has changed a little bit. Also forecasting this now to become a hurricane by tomorrow. And uh, as it approaches uh, the Louisiana, at least the center of it, approaching the Louisiana coastline. So let me get to it. Uh, we have a hurricane warning that is issued from Sabine Pass to Morgan City, Louisiana. We have a storm surge warning that's issued from High Island, Texas, to the mouth of the Mississippi River. And then we have a tropical storm warning that has been issued for really the entire Texas coastline from Sabine uh, past. I'm sorry, that's a tropical storm watch that's issued for the entire Texas coastline from South Padre Island to High Island, including Matagorda, Galveston, and Corpus Christi Bay. Then we have a tropical storm warning that's issued from Sabine past to High Island, and then also a tropical storm watch over there. Um, by the Lake Pontchartrain area near the Mississippi-Louisiana border. So a lot going on since we last spoke uh, earlier this morning, Jeff. Well, don't we just love the tropics, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and look boy, at all that color. <laughs> when, when we, we love the tropics, and it looks like Christmas trees on maps when we get into it. And, uh, you know, this is just some of the additional warnings and stuff. So not only do we have our coastal products in place, we do have uh, inland uh, tropical storm and, and hurricane warnings. I'll show you that in a minute in Lake Charles. But we do along the upper Texas coast from High Island back down towards Matagorda Bay, we do have a coastal flood warning in effect. And that is for the coastal flooding we anticipate since we are not under a storm surge product on the upper Texas coast. Again, that ends at uh, Sabine Pass. And we'll see if we have any extensions of that a little bit further to the uh, west. I, I don't think we will. I think we've seen probably... The, the shifts we're going to see, we have a pretty well-defined center now. And, and I think that's, that's everything seems yeah. to be on target to, to move along. Um, but showing the map here in South central Louisiana, even over in the Southeast Louisiana, all the colors. Um, the, the point here being, this is tropical storm warning well inland. So all of these parishes here in central Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, um, you know, the tropical storm uh, warning extending well inland. So the anticipation of strong winds here across south central southwest louisiana even here in the extreme southeast texas orange county southern part of jasper newton counties uh, and jefferson county we could get some you know 40 50 60 mile per hour winds uh as francine kind of comes up in this direction likely landfall here somewhere wednesday earlier now we're looking midday wednesday uh we were thinking yeah. wednesday evening now we're looking midday-ish uh, somewhere here between, oh, say, Cameron, Louisiana, and the west side of Vermilion Bay. Not a whole lot down here. I've been down here several times doing storm surge surveys. Um, there's a few little towns along here. But uh, just recently issued mandatory evacuation for the southern portion of Cameron Parish. And I suspect we will probably see some additional mandatory evacuations. Uh, and that's for that storm surge flooding potential here uh, west of Vermilion Bay. And then kind of along the north and eastern portions of Vermilion Bay. Yeah. And going forward, it's there hasn't been a lot of change. I know the you know the the track shifted west and people were, but the, the, there's just not a lot of change here with this. So you can see the 
onset of tropical storm force winds, the arrival times, and then also the probabilities of those tropical storm force winds, maybe a little bit of a bump up here on the upper coast, um, you know, between 50 and 60% chance of sustained yeah. 40 mile per hour winds. That's what that means, tropical storm force. Yeah. And a little bit faster. So we're talking, you know, by Tuesday evening, potentially here uh, into Matagorda and Missouri counties. And by Wednesday morning, we're, we're having tropical storm force winds landfalling on the Louisiana coast. So those, you folks over there in Louisiana, uh, from Lake Charles all the way over to Vermilion Bay, you got to get everything done tomorrow because yep. the weather is going to go down pretty quickly on Wednesday morning here. So the, the time preparation is going to be done yep. uh, by by Wednesday morning when the sun comes up. Yep. And then we look at the 58 mile in our winds. Why do I look at this? Well, this is kind of the wind speed that, that starts causing damage. So this is when you might start losing some tree limbs or your fences start blowing down or you start seeing some power outages. And so you can see here on the upper Texas coast, uh, again, still very low probabilities of 58 mile an hour winds, especially in the metro area. We're talking 5%. 5 to 10%, yeah. maybe 10 to 20% down Galveston Island, Bolivar, uh, Eastern Chambers County. And then the, the percentages go up a little bit as you go over towards Beaumont, Port Arthur, and, and obviously here in Louisiana. So we're still not anticipating any big significant impacts here on the upper Texas coast. Yeah, Wednesday is going to be breezy. Um, you know, 20, 30 mile an hour winds across much of the area. You may gust 40, 45, 50 down along the coast. We can get that sometimes with a strong cold front in the wintertime. Yeah. Um, could there be some power outages? Yeah, there could be some isolated power outages, especially down the coast. Mm -hmm. um, and then water level rise. So this is the storm surge inundation coming. Um, not looking tremendous here on the upper coast, you know, one to three feet, very similar to what we had with Alberto back in June. Yeah. This is about half of what we saw with barrel. And then where you really get into big concerning levels is here in this red area. So between Cameron and Port Fourchon over in, uh, near the Grand Isle area, we're talking five to 10 feet of inundation above the ground. So that's over your head. That's over the roof or up to the rooftop of a one story home. And this is this is life threatening. This is this is concerning inundation in this area. I suspect not this whole area is going to see this. If you know the track is a little bit further here to the west, uh, a portion of this area will see this. But due to the uncertainty still in how the track may go, you you kind of broad brush this amount of coastline with that five to ten foot potential. And this is what this looks like uh, when you actually go in and inundate the land. A lot of this is marsh down here. Like I said, I've done surveys down here many times. And a lot of this is marsh area, but you know, you're seeing this red here. That red is greater than nine feet above the ground. So this is life-threatening storm surge here uh, mm -hmm. in the Vermilion Bay, the northern and eastern sides of the bay. And then over here, just south of intercoastal city, intercoastal cities up in this region. Again, this is mostly marsh land out here. There's a few towns. Uh, up here on the northwest side of Vermilion Bay, intercoastal cities, kind of over in this area. Um, and then getting up, you know, look at the extent here. We're talking miles of extent of seawater inundation inland. So, you know, getting up to the south side of Abbeville, just west here of New Iberia. And the, the storm surge is going to push up those low bayous and rivers and estuaries here in southern Louisiana. So you're going to, you can kind of see some of that with these little fingers. Those are the bayous that kind of drain. Um, you're going to you're going to see some of that. And then there's there's levee protection here on the west side of Highway 90 that kind of protects mm -hmm. that Highway 90 corridor. So you kind of see the sharp cutoff. Mm -hmm. But then you get over here, even to the southeastern Louisiana, you know, around uh, the New Orleans area, mm -hmm. uh, Lake Pontchartrain. Um, and we have inundation here. So this is all of the hurricane protection system mm -hmm. uh, that protects these levees area, levee areas here. But look up here on the north side of Lake Pontchartrain, again, yeah. with the center coming up in this direction, you're going to get a good southeast east wind that's going to push this water towards the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain over here. And so we have seen before Mandeville and some areas out here on the west side of the lake where you get this uh, elevated water level rise from the wind pushing the lake water up here. And so you don't want to sleep on that up here because you can get some pretty decent inundation up here. So you know, look at look at how far we're talking. We're talking about a landfall somewhere over here, southwest central Louisiana, and potential storm surge of of uh, anywhere from three to four feet above ground level here in the north side of Lake Pontchartrain. So this is why we always tell people don't focus on where the track is, 
you know, look at the impacts and, and yes. clearly here uh, the impacts are going to be far reaching and, and it's going to be uh, certainly a, a rough day for Louisiana as we get into Wednesday. Yeah, good call on NHC, though, to pick up on that Lake Pontchartrain storm surge. And then as far as the rainfall, not much change here. Um, any, Of course, any tropical system, it, it's going to be a rainfall event, but uh, nothing too crazy, relatively speaking, for a tropical system. A half a foot of rain or so, most of it in that central core of Louisiana, the central uh, coastline there. Then you get over to Texas rapid drop off especially when you get northwest to houston just uh just not much but uh with any of these bands don't pay too much attention to those exact numbers with this modeling because with any bands they can set up in a spot and, and um, you can see higher amounts than this yeah i mean I, I mean the rainfall i think is is probably on the the lower side of the threat matrix here so an accelerating hurricane toward the coast the rainfall isn't probably going to be that great you know we're talking Four to five inches of rain. That's 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 any day in Louisiana, um, and so I don't I don't think the the flood threat here is is significant. Yeah, we could get some flooding, but the storm surge inundation on the coast and that inland penetration of wind, since the storm is going to be accelerating, much like what we saw here with Barrel, it's going to bring those strong winds well inland. So Baton Rouge, uh, Lafayette, uh, even though you're inland from the coast, you're going to get some of those strong winds. Uh, and, and eventually the, and some heavy rains also, but that storm surge down here, if, if uh, you know, folks are uh, issuing evacuation recommendations, heed those recommendations, get out of those low lying areas down here along the southwest and south central Louisiana coast. For sure. uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, for, for everybody preparing for this, tomorrow's kind of it. Uh, you got to get it done tomorrow, tomorrow evening, because things going to go downhill quick on Wednesday. Yeah, and this thing's been kind of gaining speed as we've seen through the afternoon. So the earlier you start tomorrow, the better. So, uh, and we will keep you right uh, informed right here on Weather Insights. We'll continue doing a couple of uh, updates each day. Uh, we are also going to be doing a live version. By the time you might be watching this, we might be live. We're going to be going live about 7 o'clock Central tonight, doing a little expanded version of Weather Insights. So look for that, and we'll be... Um, hosting another briefing tomorrow. Jeff, thank you much.